What's going on everyone? My name is Nate and I'm one of the newest members of the Altcoin Picks team. Uh, so first of all, I want to give a big shout out to Jean and Stefan for bringing me aboard. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time and I'm just generally thankful to be here with you guys and hopefully I can generate a lot of helpful and useful content moving forward. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one of my personal favorite sleepers in the market uh, and that is POA Network. I feel like this coin shows a lot of promise when compared to competitors elsewhere. I feel like the developmental progress is fantastic and overall their model just has a lot of low long-term viability in my opinion. So without further ado, let's get to it. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you like the content we're sharing here at Altcoin Picks, please be sure to follow us on Twitter and join our Discord community. Uh, additionally, please keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. And at the end of the day, you're responsible for your own gains and losses. I'm just a guy sharing his thoughts on some crypto. Okay, so what is POA? POA is our proof of authority network it is an open source Ethereum sidechain that utilizes a consensus model called proof of authority. It essentially lowers the barrier to entry for small to medium sized businesses wishing to utilize blockchain technology. And uh, it does this by providing a network that simplifies the technical barriers to entry as well as lowers the cost to entry. This is something I'm particularly excited about because I feel like a lot of the time these projects you see in the space particularly focus on either niche industries or major enterprise. And if we want to see mass adoption of blockchain technology at large, we're going to have to see a lot of that built from the ground up. And I think POA hit the nail on the head with this because they are targeting specifically for medium, small to medium sized businesses, providing an open source network that, you know, is secure, cost efficient, and is, has a low barrier to entry and offers, you know, benefits that normally would only be offered on private chains. Another thing I wanted to note was that, once again, this is an Ethereum sidechain, so that any application that runs on the Ethereum network can run on POA network, and it can do so with faster block times as well as with a lower cost. So, you know, Ethereum is king. It's the largest network, and I think this is uh, just some flexibility that is extremely beneficial to have in the space and something that is, is worth noting outside of, you know, the benefits of side chains for Ethereum, such as, you know, operational efficiency, lower costs and and whatnot. If you'd like some more information on side chains and the benefits, you can can Google that and, and look into it. So let's get into the bread and butter of uh, proof of authority network. So essentially the benefit at large of this project is their consensus model, okay? So say you're a small or medium-sized business and you wanna initiate a network on the POA, on, on the POA network. So what you do is you have 12 initial keys that you distribute to validators of your choice, meaning you choose those validators. Those validators are then legally required to sign a contract with POA, obtain a US public notary license, and then validate blocks on your uh, network. So why this is beneficial is because in comparison to a POS system, POS essentially operates whereas people are incentivized to act in the best interest of the chain based on their stake. Whereas with this, the validators are incentivized to operate or I'm sorry, incentivized to act in the best interest of the chain based on their identity, meaning it is openly transparent. They have a notary license and they're incentivized to act in the best interest of the network because they are who they are. So their identity itself is subject to verification requirements, including proof of address and no criminal record. So they're being very stringent about this, making sure that only, you know, legitimate people are running nodes on that network and are openly transparent and at large, that will mean that the the model itself will will lead to a more secure network and people acting in in the best interest of that network with transparency. So a major benefit of benefit of that as well is built in governance. Validators vote for adding or removing validators using a governance decentralized application. So if there are validators that you know are are participating in nefarious acts or, or anything like that, they can be voted out of that. Um, so once again, that is a beautiful part about this consensus model and that there's built-in governance. Additionally, since the validators are required to actually sign a legally binding contract with POA network, hard fork decisions are legally binding. And I think this is something that's really awesome because a lot of the times th this, this space is Everybody's trying to figure out what's going on with it, and that includes the legalities of it. There's an emer it's an emerging technology, and the the legal boundaries of this space are very thin at this point, and not many 
projects are trying to focus purely on how to manage a network, especially when it comes to the legality of how it's operating. So this is something that with the validation consensus model, I think is extremely important because if you're a small company or a medium sized company or even a large company coming into this space, you're going to first of all want an operational network. But then on top of that, you're going to want a legal framework surrounding that network so so you can be assured that the network is going to be maintained correctly and that it's going to be operating in a legally efficient manner okay so looking at the roadmap you can obviously take a look um, in a greater depth but um, one thing I did want to note was that their, their mainnet has been live since December and then on top of that they have also launched their bridges already I think it was about a week or two weeks ago. So you hear about interoperability all the time in this space. And, you know, they have literally done it at this point and they're getting no recognition for it. And they should. I mean, you can go on Binance, buy their native token, transfer it over to their site and literally convert that from, from their native token into an Ethereum compliant POA 20 token and store it near my, my Ether wallet. Now, obviously, there's a lot of benefits for interoperability. Once again, I'll leave that to you to go online and research that. But it's just unbelievable because there are companies that or I'm sorry, projects that, you know, won't have this tech built until 2019 that have a higher market cap than than POA network and and their bridges are live at this point with a mainnet live as well which is just incredible to me so looking going down and looking at the partners the partners are a little bit thin at this point um which is in in to be honest a little bit disappointing but I truly expect that in the next six months to a year that that there's going to be some some good partners popping up on on this list just because once again they have an operational network live bridges it's an ethereum side chain and I think they have a lot to offer with their legal framework and their consensus model that I think it'll be very enticing for uh, for companies to begin working working with uh, POA network. Okay, just to take a quick look at the team, there are a few things I want to note here. First of all, I wanted to uh, discuss the co-founder and tech lead, Igor Baranov. Um, if you look at his LinkedIn, you know, he's got a lot of great experience, over a decade experience in technology, um, and he's kind of known for pioneering uh, developments in blockchain-enabled notary, which, as we know, is kind of the foundation of POA's consensus model. He's got a lot of great experience. He worked for, uh, I am sorry, he co-founded Profit Button, which is an advertising uh, mobile application, which brings in an estimated about 19 million in annual revenue. Um, he worked in a data engineer in data engineering, which managing and designing the infrastructure of the back end uh, for the app for an the application at Block Notary, and then on top of that, you'll see he has a fair amount of experience just in blockchain outside, um, working uh, with Acronis, which um, basically Acronis. Uses an authentic, it uses blockchain as an authentication process for personal and business data. Um, he was co-founder of Block Notary, which I uh, uses blockchain tech as well to uh, store digital fingerprints of photos on the chain. So you know, lots of great experience, and once again, he's kind of forefronting the uh, blockchain enabled the notary, which is extremely important not only as a consensus model for um, businesses, but then on top of that, just for legalities. Now, the other developers that core devs that I just wanted to talk about real quick are Victor Varanov and uh, I believe his Pavel uh, Hahulin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They've obviously um, they've got over a decade in, of experience in, in uh, systems architecture and systems engineering. They worked at Hints, Hint Solutions. Um, Hint Solutions is essentially an IT outsourcing company, so they've got some, some great experience there. And uh, they've also worked uh, for Block Notary, so you'll see that they obviously probably developed uh, the relationship with Igor during that time. And if you go on their, their GitHubs, you will see that these guys have have done a lot of great work for POA and they're they're just continuously active on there and they've just been doing a lot of fantastic work so without getting too long-winded obviously I just wanted to touch real quick on their advisors David Thalander is, is kind of a powerhouse got 30 years in financial services and experience in legal frameworks risk management and auditing auditing uh, he's a managing partner for par equity which is a 125 million dollar venture capital firm based in Edinburgh uh, on top of that he was a managing director for a few years at Pricewaterhouse Coopers which is a major company um, that manages over 37.7 billion in annual revenue they provide uh, assurance tax and advisory services services and uh, overall you know I, I feel like he's real strong because you know that POA network is trying not only develop an, ob an obvious uh, great and operational platform but on top of that a strong and found a strong legal model for for these companies to use um, lastly we talk about 
I hope I don't butcher his name, it's William uh, Mugayar. Um, he's got a lot of experience in blockchain technology. He's been in the space since 2013. Um, He's aided projects in uh, you know their overall strategy, marketing, and growth. He actually wrote a book on the called the business of blockchain, which has been fairly popular. And then on top of that, actually uh, did a TED talk, um, a featured TED talk on blockchain economics. So you'll see, he also founded uh, the Token Summit, which is a uh, a conference that that goes on in New York. So. I'm sure that he's going to be aiding more on their blockchain uh, advisory role and helping them with, uh, you know, their networking and, and connecting into the space because he's been in the space since 2013, which is fairly early overall. Not insane, but, you know, he's been here a while and, you know, I'm sure that he's providing some strong mentoring and advisory um, on how they should be navigating this space. So he's he's someone uh, that I also felt was was really worth noting. So the team overall, I can't stress this enough, is, you know, a lot of the time, people really get obsessive about technology experience and and while well, working for you know the biggest companies when in actuality what we should be doing is looking at this which is their github page and their developmental progress their real working progress as I noted earlier you know they they have an operational chain at this point they have live bridges um, the main nets out every, I, these guys are just they're killing it they're doing absolutely fantastic you know there are, are projects out there that are valued at 200 to 500 million market cap with barely any progress on their GitHub. And these guys are just continuously pumping out fantastic work, updated. Their their repos are just continuously updated and, and they're doing a lot of fantastic work and grinding it through. So, you know, a lot of the times these projects are pure speculation. And in this case, you know, I feel like not only are they undervalued and under hype, but on top of that, their progress deserves a lot more recognition because these guys have just been killing it. Okay, so let's take a look at the metrics. First of all, you'll see that we have a total supply of about 255 million, and the circulating supply is about 204 million. Um, this means that roughly 80% of the supply is actually released into the market, which is great to see. On top of that, uh, the market cap is about 76 million. I believe at the peak it was close to 150 million. So it's you know no secret that Bitcoin's been dropping the past couple weeks. We saw movement up for about five weeks and now we've been continuously dropping for three weeks. We're sitting at about $7,600 at this point. So with that, all coins have been dropping as well. So taking a look at uh, POA, you know the reason I took a position um, was because you know it wasn't just continuous, you know just a, a a pump at large it was continuous stair stepping up and then you will see that with this pump it actually broke um, some pretty key supports so i think i averaged about 7k sats maybe 7200 sats um, and you know at this point i'm uh, looking to begin dollar cost averaging the drop is close to the lows um, in april when it saw that massive accumulative pump and uh, i think at this point it just you know this isn't financial advice but this is a, a pretty good entry point to begin dollar cost averaging if you would want to take a position. The peak was about uh, 10,000 sats, which correlated to, I believe, uh, 90 cents USD. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of room to to get to double, or I'm sorry, there's a lot of room to get to the previous all-time high, which is about double. And then on top of that, you know, looking back with the development progress, you know, the consensus model and, you know, how I feel they will personally be enticing to a lot of companies wishing to use this technology, I think this this could definitely be a billion dollar market cap coin in the next year, um, if not more. So all, all it takes, you know, is one solid partner, some more exposure and, and some marketing and, and, you know, these guys should definitely begin to take off and this project should do well. So once again, you know, this is my first video. If uh, you know you like the content that I've been sharing here, if there's anything you'd like me to improve on or, or do differently when I'm actually reviewing a coin, please be sure to, to add some comments and I'll try to, to make sure that I listen to that and uh, accommodate your requests. Um, so please hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you guys soon. All right. Thanks again.